Hi everybody, this is an excerpt from our 3D Model Mastery course where we take assets from Blender and move them over into Unity. I'm your main instructor, Michael Bridges. If you'd like to find out more about this course, stay tuned at the end of this video and also follow the links in the video description. Enjoy this video. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be getting a nice simple primitive like this one in front of us over into Unity. And of course, we're gonna be doing it from Blender. So we're gonna have lots of fun working out what comes across and what does not come across when you export a model from Blender into Unity. Let's go have some fun. Okay, so once you've logged into Unity and you get started, you'll be presented with a screen similar to this. Uh, you may already have projects there, you may not, but what we are going to do is click on New because this is a new project. And instead of just leaving it New Unity Project, we're gonna start off by calling it exactly what it is. In this case, it's our first import. Now the location is important. This is where everything's gonna be stored, including our assets. Now I've got a very special place that I'm going to store it so I can keep track of everything I do feel free to store yours wherever you need to once I've done that I'm going to leave everything else as default and create a project excellent so once the project has been created uh, we can start moving some assets into there so this unity project is all set up ready to go and we can move on now to importing something like a primitive over into unity I'm going to switch desktops over to my Blender screen. I'm going to hop across like that rather than having both on the screen. It can get rather confusing or even rather cramped if I try and do that. So we have a simple cube here. It's called cube in the hierarchy, which is important. And that it's not saved yet. So let's go ahead and save the default cube just to see what comes across in a very simple way. So if we go to save... I'm going to go to my particular folder where I've got first import. And then within that, there is an assets folder. Now I'm going to call my file cube and I'm just going to save it. One of the beauties with Blender and Unity is that Unity can open up Blender in the background and export the model for us. So we don't have to do anything. Now you'll see there are a few quirks that come along with that, but we'll discuss them in more detail in a future lecture. Now that we've saved that in that assets folder, we can hop back into Unity and it should import it. And there we go. Now we can see here we've got the cube and we've got a materials folder. I didn't set up any materials. It looks like a default material has come across. That's useful for knowing. And we'll look at materials in there on their own in a bit. The cube itself, if we click on that, we can see at the very bottom it's cube.blend. And we can open it up and it's got various components within it. Okay, and we've, we drag that into the hierarchy. It appears in our scene and we can move it about. So that's a great start to getting a basic object over into Unity. And the great thing about this is we can be lean. So if we need to make a, a change to our cube here, let's just randomly pull up one of these edges and save the file. When we go back over into Unity, it only takes a few seconds, depending on how complex your model is, in order for that to update. Now that is incredibly useful when you're working and you need to rapidly iterate between your model and how it's looking in a game engine. Now, you, we will discover in a few moments that not everything you'd expect to come across comes across as you would expect it to. Sometimes there's a few quirks that we need to iron out. So let's now have a look a bit closer at understanding what comes across and what doesn't. So let's go back over into Blender and see what we've got actually going on in the background here. So let's focus on materials first of all because materials came across but I didn't think I assigned a material to our object. So let's have a look. Now, there is a material assigned and it's called material. Let's call this um, dark stone or something along those lines. Oh, I've managed to hit every key next to the enter key. And let's change this diffuse color and make it a darker color. Let's save our file and go back across. Okay, so it updates the color. Let's have a look at the materials. Ah, okay, it's brought in a new color. And we've still got the old material there. Obviously, we can drag these onto any object. Okay, so what happens now 
if we grab this dark stone and decide to make it a slightly different color. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's change that to green, a dark green. British racing green, why not? Okay, that hasn't seemed to update. I'm just going to go back and save that again in case it didn't save. Okay, so it looks like every time you import a material, it brings it in once, but will not bring it in again. It doesn't overwrite if it's got the same name, but it does create a new one if it's got a different name. Now, this is something you'll have to bear in mind when naming your materials. If you've got two the same, they won't necessarily come across. And we'll have a much deeper dive into materials later on in the course. Now, in the similar spirit as to our playing just now, having a look at what comes across and what doesn't, I'd like you to go a little further and do some more investigation on your own. So we're going to have a challenge now. We're going to be iterating our model and playing and seeing what comes up. So this is a great opportunity to iterate the model and play around. I'd like you to think carefully about your naming. Naming is incredibly important and on occasion, we, we, you know, when you're just testing something, you tend to just throw down any old name. Let's not do that. Let's set ourselves a goal of naming things appropriately as we're going rather than having to sort it out later on. Try transforming your model in Blender, saving it and testing. What does that turn out like? And by transform, I mean scaling, rotating, moving it about the scene, etc. Try adding materials like we've just done and change the color. Does everything we discovered so far always happen like that? Try with uh, different numbers of mesh objects as well. So not only just one in there, but a couple. Try rotating things in Unity. Try rotating them in Blender and seeing what, what actually happens. Moving on from the transform, not only in Blender, but also transform it over in Unity. See if you come across any issues. And do take a look at the inspector in Unity you may then start to recognize there are a few issues when it comes to importing our model that we're going to have to deal with. So go ahead, pause the video now, go explore Unity and Blender together just with simple primitives and remember to have fun as you're doing so. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and iterate the model and play as we do. So we have this in front of us at the moment and we already recognize that the material itself doesn't seem to update. Let's just test that now whilst that's in front of us. So I'm going to name this particular material now um, dark green, why not, rather than dark stone because that's kind of what it is. Oh, I can't spell. There we go. Or rather, I can't always see the keyboard because I've got a whopping great big microphone in front. Okay. So this appears to have, the material has come in, but it's not updated in our scene, so we can drag that on, and there we go. So we can bring some material properties across from Blender, and that can be useful for identifying parts. Now, as we get on, you will see that that's about where it stops when it comes for materials themselves. There are some tricks you can do to bring textures across, but in the end, we will find out that you do have to set up your materials in your final host program, whether that is Unity or another game engine or even another program if you're making models and rendering them elsewhere. Essentially, whatever is doing the rendering at the end is going to have to do that. So let's have a look at the inspector itself. I did mention that, or we need something to inspect, so let's click on the cube. Incidentally, talking about naming, this isn't a cube anymore. So there's an argument to say, well, I should really change the name to something a bit more descriptive. So what happens if we do that? Let's go ahead and move into Blender itself. And let's call this um, pointy cube. I don't know. Um, it is a rough shape. So we've got pointy cube. Notice that the lamp and camera aren't coming across in this instance either. So that, it has that redone anything? No, it's still called cube. That's because that's the file name, okay? The actual mesh data inside the file has updated. Interesting. Now, what I'm going to do here, and I would advise you to do this, I am going to close down Blender for a second, and this cube here, I'm going to rename it Pointy Cube 
I'm going to rename it here in Unity. That way you do not break any associations. If you were to name it outside of Unity, you would end up inadvertently creating another mesh object and it would appear in Unity as well. And that can get confusing if you've got lots in there. So we've also got, when we open this up, exploring here, we've got a default take and an avatar. Hmm, interesting. We could work on those later. Uh, this isn't animated, so why has that come across? Good question. We'll write that down and deal with it later. Inspector time. So I'm going to select it in the hierarchy. Of course, you can click on it as well. Now, I am going to remove my services tab here. So I'm going to go to window. Or oh, I can just drag it out and close it, can't I? Drag it out and close it. Um, I just want the inspector on the side there. So having a look, it has a position. I think that's from me moving it earlier, which is fine. But it's got this rotation of minus 90 on the x-axis. Now, what happens if we move it? Okay, so that is rotating around the x-axis. That's this red arrow here. That's fine. Let's set that back to minus 90 as it was. Rotating around the y-axis. Okay, that's rotating around the z-axis here. Well, we've got a blue up, but the y facing upwards, that's fine. That kind of makes sense. And the Z, if we rotate it there, and it also rotates around the Y axis. Okay, so something odd is going on there. And we really need to take a deeper look at that. So we won't cover that at this point in time. Now, of course, there are a couple of things we can look at now. Let's look at let's look at rotation just a little bit more and see what happens and translation. So if I shift this in Blender over on, let's remember what we're doing here. So minus X and save and move it across. Does it move in minus X here? Does it end up over here? It's not moved. Now, sometimes you have to clear what's in the hierarchy and replace it. So it has moved. Notice the value here, 5.48x. If we go into the properties panel and scroll up, 5.48. So that has come across. That's useful. If we then add a couple more transforms and let's scale it down and rotate it. Let's rotate it deliberately on the y-axis so it's pointing towards us and then save it again. That has seemed to have moved it. Has, has it stored the rotation? Let's bring it back in. Yes, okay. So it seems to be moving in its own little world and in fact now the x-axis is pointing upwards as well whereas it was the Z earlier. Now that is because we're using the object's local coordinates at the top of the screen. We can change local to global. However, that doesn't help us with its position in space and also getting a grip on things. It'd be nice if what we saw on the local aligned with the world and we, we can discover more about that shortly. Of course, we can still move this about in Unity and rotate it. We've already discovered that this rotation kind of works, but in here it can be a bit funny because it seems to rotate around one particular axis. So let's add a another mesh in here. Now one thing you can do is you can open up a Blender file directly from this Assets folder. If you double click on it, it will open up Blender. Now I already have that file open, so I'm going to skip over here. I'm going to realign my location with zero and then I'm going to tab to go through these fields and I'm going to set that back to zero. So it's pointing upwards again. Let's add in another mesh object. Let's add in a cylinder and I'm going to give it a material. I'm going to call the material um, cylinder. At least we know what it applies to. Oh. And again, the spelling gets in the way, or at least typing does anyway. I'm going to make it yellow and save. And if we hop into, ah, did you see that? It rotated round when we hopped into Unity. And the image here, it's no longer on its side. Oh, that's interesting. So now when we bring it in, it's in its side, and it no longer has that minus X. Oh, that might be useful. So now it will rotate around its X and rotate around Y. Excellent, and rotate around Z. Ah, okay. Are we on our way to solving that? And the axes here are aligned. Apart from I've obviously just moved them around. Again, you can tab through those values. 
Okay, that's starting to look a bit better and in alignment with what we want. Hmm. More investigation is, of course, required. Now, how did you guys get on? We've done a little bit of exploration here. Of course, there's lots more you can do. If you, if you discovered something that we haven't covered here, do share on the forum. Of course, the next coming lectures, we'll be diving a bit deeper into this and learning some of the intricacies about moving things from Blender over into Unity. Take care, and I will see you in the next lecture. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. Just one excerpt from our 3D Model Mastery course. We've got that and more game dev videos over on our channel. So why don't you go ahead and click the free trial now, join us, and let's make games together.